Myanmar is on the brink of a new civil war as more and more civilians pick up guns to defend themselves against relentless military campaign. I'll get it out there. A spokesperson for the National Unity Government has warned that Myanmar is on the verge of a new civil war as communities increasingly take up arms to protect themselves from a relentless campaign of military violence. Conflict has raged for decades in Myanmar's borderlands, where myriad ethnic arms groups are fighting with the military for greater autonomy. Since February's coup, however, dozens of new grassroots people's defense forces have emerged to oppose the junta, with battles occurring in areas of the country that were previously peaceful. Spokesperson said the constant threat of military raids, arrests, torture and killings had pushed communities to take up arms. Dr. Sasa, spokesperson for Myanmar's national unity government, also said it is just the beginning. The situation will become out of control. Even if it is one man in a village, they will not just bow in front of these murderers. It is the whole country on the road to civil war. At least 58 defense forces have formed across the country, of which 12 are active. These groups are formed at a local level and are not necessarily officially linked to the national unity government. Groups have revealed little about the nature of their training, but their resources and intensity vary. As of yesterday, it's been four months since the military coup took over Myanmar, with now everyday people arming themselves to fight the junta. My guest today is Kiao Win, and director of the Burma Human Rights Networks, and he'll be hopefully talking to us and telling us how things are currently there and how things will uh, materialize. Sir, how are you? Hope you're yeah, well. I'm perfect. I'm very well. Thank good you very much. Good to see you again. So good to see you again. Thank, Thank you. you for joining us here on A News. So how, can you give us an update? I mean, we're hearing the news that the people, more and more uh, civilians are, are, are coming up to arms. Can you tell us, talk us through how things are? Well, this uh, is since the uh, starting of, uh, uh, of this uprising. Um, if you see that uh, people came out to the street for peaceful protests against the military coup, and the response from the military, you can see here action and reaction. You know, the action was uh, the people, the military coup that took the uh, power, and the reaction of the people was they frustrated, so that they came out to the street. And then you see the action again, the, the reaction of the military on this uprising, with the very, with the, uh, you know, uh, with the uh, uh, brutal uh, crackdown, uh, killing so many people. I mean, nearly 900 people has been killed so far, and nearly 70, 47, uh, nearly 50, uh, around 50 people, uh, are, you know, uh, they are under age, you know. So there are there are uh, several people has been killed so far, though. So this is the response from the action and reaction from the military. And people feel that, that their life is not safe anymore. So, and also those who are supposed to protect them are up to killing them. So you see the reaction is, that's, that's what the natural, uh, you know, this is a, one of the nature of the people, human being, mm -hmm. they need safe, they need to be protected. So that's what's uh, happening in Burma. Indeed, I mean, as, I mean, this has been going on now for four months, has, ha have things escalated? Or have they are they sort of on a on a on a gentle rise up, or how? And I'm sure I'm, people must be dealing with COVID nineteen as well. How are yeah. things going? I mean, it must be terrible there right now. Well, people of Burma are now facing several issues with uh, without any help from the international community. That's what of the very one of the very sad thing to see, to say uh, because you see that uh, we are already. Uh, having uh, tremendous difficulties because of the military rule since the several decades. Mm -hmm. You know, the country is divided. The country has facing, uh, and, and all the infrastructure has been crippled. Mm -hmm. And this coup happened, you know, and before the coup happened, because of the COVID-19, our economy is totally, you know, nearly to collapse. So this military coup has helped to collapse the economy to you know cripple the banking system to uh, for the in many areas now there are lack of food there are lack of 
basic foods, you know, their lack of medicines and, and doctors. So we are in people in Burma, across Burma, as you see that the, the huge humanitarian crisis is now facing. And then unfortunately, we don't see any international uh, significant support on the uprising. And mm -hmm. so far only there is a lip service. And I, we welcome, of course, there are some uh, sanctions and, and, and there, but we need more. Because as you see, day by day, the dead bodies are piling up. And the young children, women, dis uh, and disabled people, and elders, their life is now severely under the threat. And top of that, the way of the military brutality is, you see, if they want to arrest someone, and if they couldn't find it, they arrest their fa family members, they arrest their uh, underage child, or pregnant woman, and 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 uh, you know uh, sick uh, sick and, and ill uh, elders, parent, pa their parents, and even one day today we reported that in one place when they couldn't find someone, and they arrested their grandparents. So the brutality and and the cruelty has no limit with this fascist military. It's 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 sad and terrible to hear. Uh, so the people. Are are we right to are we right to think that most people are on strike actually and they're not going to work? Is that true? Yeah, this is called a CDM movement, civil disobedience movement, sure. which has been very very successful. But I am also uh, salute those people who took their life, you know, into danger and uh, stood up against that military coup and brutal regime. You see, one thing is very much a common understanding in people of Burma is we don't want to let our country go back to the dark age that where we we, we 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 gone through all our young age you know during our life so that's what we don't want to to uh, you know allow to happen again to our coming generation mm -hmm. so that's why we are standing up against this but the, another thing is you see uh, so far uh, what the international reaction is very uh, appalling uh, um, so one uh, western countries are now throwing all this issue on the head of uh, asian countries while ASEAN countries are divided, and they've been also struggling between the pressure from China, the pressure from Russia, the pressure from Western countries. Mm -hmm. So, and, 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 and ASEAN countries, definitely, they are divided. As you see, the recently, something very uh, important to uh, notice, uh, Vietnam, uh, we received information from in, inside that Vietnam delegation in New York, uh, under the pressure of the Russia and their interests, they have asked uh, to remove a clause that asking for in UNGA resolution on arms embargo against the Burmese military. So, which wow. is, you see, uh, ASEAN is, a, it, there is a huge trust deficit Indeed. between the people of Burma and ASEAN. Indeed. So, we people of Burma, we don't trust what's happening in Burma. But, of yeah. course, there are individual countries like Malaysia, like Indonesia, who mm -hmm. have been standing up again with us, mm -hmm. and they have been raising very strong voices. But, it, it should happen more than that. Indeed, indeed. And what of the uh, ousted leader, Aung San Suu Kyi? I mean, we've heard that she's been moved. Um, I'm guessing the location isn't um, available. We don't know that. But politically, how has... Um, I mean, OK, I, yes, we, of course, we appreciate uh, the, the, the people, the movement of the people. But politically, how are things... Are things moving? Are things moving in the right direction? <laughs> You see, this uprising is very much about the principle. And what, they, what the principle is, if as long as anyone try to, cozy, try to establish a cozy life, cozy relation with the military, will be, you know, politically suicide for people of Burma. So you, no one should uh, associate with that military. Even the Aung San Suu Kyi cannot associate with the military anymore. She, her, look at the five years, last past five years. She tried her best to try is to establish a good relationship to win the, the heart of the military. But at the price of the minorities, at the price of democratic reforms, at the price of the people's lives, at the price of especially Rohingya women, children, and those who have been victims of the genocide in 2016 and 2017. So her, from her side, what we see is a, is a total failure. And this is a very, very poor strategy for as a leader to risking the people's life in mm -hmm. order to appease the criminals. So that yeah. is, that's not going to happen anymore. But of course, people are still sympathetic to her. People are still sympathetic to her because of her father, because of what he, she has, so of course, done something for the country. But now there are lots of changes in their mind. The focus is the uprising, the focus of this uprising, not her anymore, mm -hmm. not her party anymore. Mm -hmm. This is about the country. This is mm -hmm. about the, our value and, and our, our freedom.
indeed. And uh, uh, my last question to you, sir, uh, I really appreciate your time. The, uh, how are the minority groups, like the Rohingyas, are they being represented? Yes. To, are, are, I mean, are they, I know they're getting involved, of course, but are they getting more sort of, uh, you know, representative in the new government or the new thinking of, of things is what I want to say. Well, I would like to share you a very good news here is uh, people of uh, Muslim community in Burma uh, on 29th of uh, uh, May, uh, we have declared that Muslims of Myanmar multi-ethnic uh, consultative committee has formed. Mm -hmm. So this committee involves all the Muslim minorities. Uh, as you see, the uh, Muslim population is about 10% population of Burma. Among this 10% population of Burma, totally, uh, total Muslim population, 30%, around 30% is Rohingya people. Mm -hmm. But the other 70% of the Muslim population, they are widespread across Burma. So the strategy is, you see, the committee will try to establish with the relation with the, uh, in communication with the NUG government. While it is happening, they are all the, on, the, on the other hand, we are also reaching out to the uh, uh, ethnic minorities leaders. Because mm -hmm. the Muslim minorities, are, uh, the interest of our Muslim is widespread in every every, every part of the country. Indeed. On the uh, uh, but one one of the plus side is you see uh, like ethnic arms group like Achin and like Karens and like Chin people and the Shan people. There are many ethnic minorities groups. They are now trying to establish a, 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 a alliance between them, trying to work with them politically and and uh, militarily. Mm -hmm. So. What I'm expecting, what we are expecting is hopefully if the NUG government can persuade them, mm -hmm. could, if the policy, the policy of the NUG uh, government mm -hmm. would be sound perfect, that the minority of the guarantee, that guarantee the minorities, the uh, equal rights, the citizenship mm -hmm. rights, mm -hmm. and uh, there shouldn't be any first class, second class citizens. Mm -hmm. There must be one citizen and equal to all. Wow. And the liberal democracy and value uh, uh, will be, you know, uh, um, the value of the liberal democracy mm -hmm. and then also uh, federal democracy will be sustained. This is very important and move the NUG government we are expecting to do. But mm -hmm. so far, um, NUG government, of course, they are also struggling with uh, lots of pressure, lots of security threat. But successfully, they have been coming to at some point. If I may compare to the 88, 88 uprising, during the 88 uprising, the current such a uh, what happening today was unable to establish in during that 88 uprising. So current uprising is uh, we have learned so many mistakes from our past mistakes. We have learned so many things from our past mistake, and we have corrected those mistakes, and we have uh, developed so many new strategies. Uh, uh, so and you see that that these are strategies are now working, and this is a very collaborative movement. Uh, of course, NUG government is also playing its role, but the, every citizen of Burma. Everyone, those who uh, value the democracy and who value the federal democracy, is standing up against that military coup and joining, you know, with the with the NUG. That's uh, that is the reason why Muslim community in Burma has formed yeah. a very strong committee. This is excellent uh, news. Yeah, excellent news indeed, Kwaiwin. Honestly, excellent news. Uh, it's good to hear that some things are moving in the right direction, at least. Kwai Win, thank you very much, sir, for your time, and no thank welcome. you for joining me here on A News. I hope to speak to you again close in the future. Thank you, thank you very much. You're